Hey guys, how we doing? It's been a minute. I understand that black and white Christianity coming at you. Let me explain. <clears throat> I had COVID. I had COVID and <laughs> it ravaged my family. My little kids had COVID. My wife had COVID. It was a thing. We had made it a year or so without getting it, but it was our turn in the shoot. So <clears throat> that's why uh, you guys haven't had one of these in a week. I was recovering. Uh, Tyreek, how, how you do you been? feel now, buddy? How do you I, feel now? <laughs> as you can hear, <clears throat> little residuals, small residuals hanging on, but I feel good. I feel good. Praise God. All honor and glory be to him. The church stepped up in a mighty way. They were praying. I had multiple believers from other states praying and, you know, people were providing us with food. So praise God for the church and the brothers and sisters that there be in there. So thankful to them and thankful for the almighty for healing. So we're in a good place. I'm happy to be happy back to see with you, you in the land of the living. Me too. Me too. I'm happy to be here because I tell you what, that thing will lay you flat as you well know. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. So tonight guys, we're going to be talking about why people are leaving the faith. You may be seeing a lot of, um, high priority or high up there people that are in the media quite a bit just leaving the faith or they call it deconstructing the faith we're going to talk about that tonight we're going to maybe try to answer some questions we're going to try to kind of dig into into this why why are we seeing such a <coughs> massive leaving of the faith um so let's dive into it Tyreek, would you like to start? You have some thoughts or you want me to go? I think you should go first. Okay. So what I'm going to start with is the parable of the sower or the four soils. Uh, those of you that are in your Bible and that are believers should know this one very well. So I'm going to start in Matthew 13, verse 8. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away, what has been sown in their heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. When tribulation and persecution arise on the account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on the good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, and he indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case 100, in another 60, and in one 30. So tonight we're talking about <clears throat> people leaving the faith. You know, I've heard and I've, I've watched um, high profile YouTubers or uh, <clears throat> worship people leaving the faith. They're saying I've, there was one guy that was uh, John Piper. He was on John Piper's staff. He wrote for Desiring God. And he just posted a video that says, I'm no longer a Christian. And it feels really good. Why? Why are we seeing this? There's a multitude of reasons. We're going to touch on a couple tonight. One of the ones that I'm personally seeing is I think a lot of it is they were presented the gospel in error. They weren't presented the full gospel of what it meant to follow Jesus and what it was going to cost them. Somebody shortchanged uh, them the gospel. And when you do that, and there's not a, as, as the scripture says, notice of the good soil and understands it. There wasn't a full understanding of what it meant to follow Jesus, and it proved in their life. Like it says, for the ones that fall among the rocks, they hang out for a while. They sprout up. They look good. They've got leaves, but eventually they fade away. First John says, uh, and I don't want to step on that if that's one of your scriptures, but uh, first John says they went out from us because they were never of us. So do, I, do we believe on this channel that you can lose your salvation? Yes. Yes, we do. We both, we both are in agreement on that. Um, there's a large majority of the church that believes you can never lose your salvation. I don't judge them for that. That's just not how I view the scriptures. So with that being said, 
I think one of the biggest things is they were presented the gospel poorly, and maybe it was a one-sided gospel, the God of love, grace, and compassion. So anytime they see things in the world that don't reflect that, uh, famine, pestilence, war, all of those things, you know, they think to themselves, why would a loving, gracious, compassionate God let that happen? And when they see, when they weren't presented the 100% encompassing God, and they were only presented 25%, it starts to really manifest itself in them, how they're responding. It's all about the response. One of the people that I watched, um, he was the author of I Kiss Dating Goodbye. I can't remember the gentleman's name. Maybe you guys can help me out. But he eventually walked away from the faith. And he said it was because the, how the church dealt with the gay and homosexual and lesbian community that they would not sign off on that lifestyle. And he just said that was just too much for me. And then in his interview, he apologized to the gay and lesbian community that he was a part of something that would not tolerate that. He was sorry. And so the, here again, we have this um, somebody that didn't understand what it meant to follow Jesus, what it meant to pick up your cross every day. So I'll just start with that. I'm going to revisit some of the stuff about the sower, but I want to let Tyreek go ahead and, and uh, jump in there. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, <laughs> so many points you laid out there. I, I, I guess I'll start backwards. Um, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> the, the the homosexual lifestyle nobody is gay nobody is a lesbian or any other kind of stuff like that you are practicing a homosexual lifestyle you are not that that is something that you are practicing and people need to get a good grip on that because when you tell them that the homosexual lifestyle is wrong. They take a fence like you are coming at their very being. When I'm telling you this lifestyle that you are practicing is going to land you into hell. You don't want to go down that route. You do not want to play that game. It's not just a homosexual lifestyle. It's so many other uh, things in the Bible, like coveting and like being a coward and, you know, uh, uh, um, being after other people's other people's things, which is also covered, and you know, lo loving your loving yourself, vanity, all kinds of different things like that. But um, namely, to go off of what you were talking about with the um, the homosexual community, it's just you know, yes, there there's been a dropping of the ball, like whether you are homosexual or whether you are practicing a homosexual lifestyle or you are, uh, you know, just friends um, of the homosexual community and you don't necessarily do that, but you don't see anything necessarily wrong with it or whatever. When you come to the faith, it, you're, you're going to have to take a moment. You're going to have to take a while to actually get into the scripture, to read and understand what's going on in scripture, to understand what God is desiring from his people. We, we, want, to, we want to just be saved from hell. So like, let me get out of my hell free card. How, what, mm. what kind of words do I say? How I got to do whatever. And then mm. as you spend time in it, you realize it's not just love, 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 love. And, and the way that we perceive it to be love, love, love. It's love in the way of obedience and, and uh, leaving, your, leaving your base desire, who you were behind so you can be more of Christ and less of you. And um, to that, that's, that's difficult for people when they see that, um, all the difficult, like you said, all the difficult things that's in scripture that you have to swallow to be able to be able to come into the understanding and actually be about the faith is it, it gets uncomfortable, but you have to be okay with that. Um, you have went through the, the solar parable, um, the first one, if I, I, and I'm just, I pick some things out. If I'm not all the way there, forgive me. The evil one, um, he, he takes it away. You know, the rocky ground, not rooted in, it's not rooted in himself. The thorns, the, um, the cares of the world, the deceptiveness of riches. Um, of riches. Uh, my first verse, um, and then I'm going to let you talk on it while, after I get done. My first verse is Philippians chapter 2, 3 through 4. It said, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. 
in this scripture, we're looking at rocky ground here. There's no root in yourself. This selfless, the selflessness that this faith calls for you to have is a direct opposition of our flesh and how we are taught and what we see in society is all about being the biggest, the baddest, the most money, the most this, the most that. It's about being out in, in the open, more, 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 me, 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 gimme, 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 push, push, push. That's our society that we live in. It's in complete opposition to the faith <laughs> where it's take care of others, look to others' needs, um, um, come alongside others, sacrifice your time to be there. So, so then you won't have to come into this kind of situation where it's like, I didn't know the Christian faith was like this. I, I, you know, I thought that they, they came to me off the basis of love, love, love. And then now when we're talking about this kind of love, it's like, no, we don't do that way. Like, I thought it was all love. All this is, is somebody that came in, wanted to stamp that get out of jail, get out of hell free card, and then wanted to just abide and be whoever they are. But there is a culling of who you are. You're going to be systematically through the power of the Holy Spirit and through the strength of Jesus Christ, removing what you were and your, and your things that you found, um, you know, joy or peace or comfort or any of that in and you're going toward christ right here what my brother walter knows me and i know me very well do nothing from rivalry that that was me every single thing that i had to do if i wanted to be motivated i had to have a rival i had to have one or a few people that i was always in competition with that's where i drew my motivation that's where i got the umption to go and do this and do that that that's why i had to be big man on campus wherever i was at i was always in competition always in rivalry with somebody else the problem with that is what happens when that somebody else is not there and all you're left with is yourself you do not compete with others that's not that's not our thing here we're talking with the, the, the stony ground you haven't you don't have a root in yourself you are being a version of christ not you, you got so it. you're coming at yourself go ahead uh, just to add to what you were saying you were feeding off someone else's energy to make yourself better. And instead you should have been feeding off Christ to make Christ. yourself better because that's, Absolutely. that person doesn't have enough juice to give you longevity. So I just wanted to add that to what you were saying. Yeah, absolutely. Um, go ahead. I wanted to go through a little more in detail. Some of these in the parable of the sower. One of them is the one around the rocky ground. He, he immediately receives it with joy Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. I think that's important. I think that's really important. That endures for a while. But when tribulation and persecution arise and the account of the word immediately falls away. We live in America. Let me paint this picture for you. We live in America where we have never seen a full systematic persecution of the church. Now, there may have been some things during COVID, tax stuff getting taken away, or hey, look, don't meet. Okay, fair enough. But as far as dragging out of your homes, we'll kill your children, uh, you'll lose your job. I mean, I'm talking systematic persecution. We have never felt that here from our, from the beginning. So I, when, when this comes, so many people are going to fall away or, and are falling away. We have a couple little the LGBT, the gay community, the lesbian community, they, they attack Christianity. They attack Christianity, but it's light. They don't, they're not attacking, at least I've seen some videos, so don't, don't correct me so deeply in the comments, but I'm talking like burning people at the stake or crucifying them. We're not seeing that. So when they receive it with joy, they're like, oh, that sounds awesome. And I'm not saying that this is what was said, but like, when you go to some of these big box churches, it's a feel good message. It's an encouraging message. It's a love message. And it's all under the banner of love. And so it just, it's a feeling. It's an, it's an endorphin rush. It's like, man, this is what I've been looking for. That's amazing. I accept that. That's what it says they do. They accept it immediately. 
They hear it, and yes, that's good. I'll take it. Immediately, they grab it. There was no counting cost. There was none of that. They immediately said, that's for me. Fair enough. With joy, they were happy about it. No root in themselves. Why wasn't there any root in themselves? I can only surmise that it, it was because they were putting all of their hope in that person that sent them the message. And they never thought it of any interest to do it on their own and to grow their own faith in their own diligence in the word. They just went once a, once a week to somewhere that gave them a feel-good message. What they never talked about was sin, persecution, hell, standing their ground, not being a coward, like Tyreek said. None of that. It was just love, love, grace, grace, compassion, compassion. They loved it. When tribulation comes, notice it didn't say if. When tribulation comes and persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. They don't even hang on a little bit. It was like, I heard a story today. They took a woman's daughter away from her because the daughter wanted to acknowledge herself as trans. The mother wouldn't do it. So the little girl went to, this, went to the school or somewhere and said, I don't feel safe with my mom. She won't acknowledge me as trans. They took the daughter from her. She has no right. She ain't seen her daughter more than eight hours since 2019. I don't know if you guys can see the writing on the wall. But this is the hole that opens up big for they can say, oh, you're teaching your kids Christian values? No, I'm sorry. The state doesn't allow that anymore. They're coming with us. No right. If you can't see stuff like that, you're blind. Because it's out there. It's happening. And so immediately the falling away, imagine that. Hey, look, you keep teaching your kids that conservative Christian garbage they're coming with us and they're going to a foster home. Now you deny that stuff and promise and write down this piece of paper that you'll never speak of that again to your children and you can keep them. How many people are going to say, where do I sign? Where do I sign? You got to think about stuff like that. Immediately they fell away. That was too high of a price. Too high. That was too much. Boy, have, if you really could look at yourself and look at your faith and say, at what point would I really have to consider if this is for me? And I think a lot of these people are having that under the banner of love. Oh, to the fact that we can't abide with every sin ever and have them come into the church and commune with us. I just can't get down with that. So they deconstruct. Yeah, man. Yeah, the 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 woes of life, man. Um, I think I think a lot of times people get thrown off too as they as they start to read and they start to get in the scripture and stuff like uh, like the scripture I said it says but in uh, humility count others more significant than yourselves but then at the same time you have to be bold and brazen like there's a time for this and the mm -hmm. time for mm -hmm. that and the time for this and the time for that and. The only way you're going to understand this thing and know these things, and as you said, you know, you they have no root in themselves, is you have to be in it for yourself. You can't go just one time a week, one two times a year. This isn't the reserves. Like, you have mm -hmm. to be in the word. Like, you have to mm -hmm. be in it daily. It's daily bread. And there's a lot of people, like you said, that got that feel good message and they was like, oh yeah, I want a part of that. They went to the, they went to the building and it was so inviting and it looked like a rock concert and they was giving out snacks and they had the programs and they had the this Not and the snacks. And they, felt, <laughs> <laughs> they fell in love with the culture. They fell in love right. with the culture of right. church, not Jesus. That's right. another thing. That's a good We're point. not falling in love with Jesus Christ. We're falling in love with the culture of church. We're falling in love with what it looks like and how it makes us feel and all that. None of that. Love is an action. It's not a feeling. Mm. I digress. The next one uh, that I have here is Romans chapter 12, one through, two, 1 through 2. And it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. This can also be thorns and the rocky ground. Um, the, like you have to, it's a hard shift. And sometimes 
that shift in thinking, that, that reformation of your mind is too much for people. They want to still be who they are. I want to still hang out with the same kind of people. I don't want to change my ways. I would still like to watch a little bit of porn here and there. I would still like to mm. eat all kinds of stuff over here. I would still like to, you know, to kind of like talk reckless every now and again. I think a little bit of cursing is fine if you really need to drive a point home. There's all kinds of concessions when you don't understand exactly what you are getting into here. As you put it earlier, and as the Bible always states, you have to count the cost when yep. you come to the faith. You are leaving, you are deciding to be in Jesus' camp as opposed to the world's camp. Right. And, like you, and, and what we were talking about earlier, all of the things we're surrounded on all sides we have our own flesh working against us that's fallen and corrupted we have the enemy's camp that's coming at us with every kind of temptation and 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 thing that is coming with the fiery darts on that side and then you have the world as a whole which is just doing whatever it wants mm -hmm. so like you 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 have all of this stuff constantly wave after wave surrounding you and you're trying to hold tight to this biblical principle you're trying to understand what the word says and you're trying to be there and focus but the you're being pulled in all kinds of different directions you have to have an environment that gives you a fighting chance. You have to have people, brothers, sisters in the Lord to encourage you. Hey, make sure you get in that word. Do we need to get in the word together? Like, how you doing? How you doing? Go ahead. But Tyree, why would you say then is a great majority of the youth who were raised in church, why are they falling away? Why when they leave their home? Fun. Why, when they leave their home that was a Christian home and they go out into the world, and they go to college, they get into the workforce, they say, you know what? That was just something I did when I was young. I don't, I don't really want to do that anymore. The Bible tells us that when we were young, we thought as a child, we reasoned as a child. And when we became old, we put away childish things. The thing about it is when we are young, it's play, 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 play. If there is never a hard cut and an understanding that I need to be shifting into a more um, focused and adult mindset and drive myself into principles and different things like that, you'll keep wanting to play. And the world is nothing but a big old playground. Mm -hmm. Just look around. You Whatever you want to get involved in, as long as you got the scratch or you know somebody that got the scratch and get open doors for you, you can go do that being being in the world and doing that kind of stuff to the flesh is fun and it's pleasurable and then there's something about a draw like i said when you get over there and you're not by your parents that are like you said christian conservative you're not by these people that are like are telling you like hey what you're doing there is wild and you get out here amongst these people that find it common practice to drink until they pass out have sex with whomever wherever um you know ball out till they fall out gambling and all kinds of stuff like that all of that stuff looks and sounds and feels fun in the time when you're doing it because your flesh is attracted to that fallen nonsense so of course when you get out and away from your people if you do not find like-minded people like where you came from to surround yourself with you're going to hang out with these people that's going to influence you it's a fallacy when you think that you're going to go hang out with a bunch of heathens and you're going to be that one christian that turns everybody around nonsense just by sheer numbers alone nonsense you get in the middle of that you're surrounded and you will be snuffed out period so that's why people go out here and do what they do because uh, it is appealing to the flesh. <laughs> they've been held back and restricted as far as they think. They've been held back and restricted instead of being separated and, that, and guarded off. And that's another level of understanding that's not given. I wanna, I wanna, I'm gonna touch on that, but I wanted to read second, mm -hmm. second Thessalonians 2. And it said, let no one deceive you by any means for the day shall not come except for there become a falling away first and the man revealed the son of perdition. The Lord told us about this through Paul. He told us that towards the end of all things, there would be a great falling away. There would be a, a exodus from the faith. But I wanted to speak about what you said. And again, we're going to fall on, this is understanding. Christian parents sometimes don't really want to do the work. I spoke to a woman that has sons that grew up in the church. They grew up in a, 
their parents were Christian and they, they left the faith. All of her children left the faith. And I said, let me ask you something. When you went home throughout the week, Monday through Saturday, did you guys talk about Christ? Did you read the Bible? Did you do little Bible studies? Did they memorize scripture? Did you guys do any of that with them? Oh, no. If it's not going to be put in your home, you shouldn't expect a different outcome later. You didn't enforce it there. So this whole idea of like you grew up in a Christian home, they never told you why they did this. Let me explain something to you. The reason I'm not letting you date until you're 18 is because I don't trust the world and I want to reserve your purity and your innocence. I don't want you to go out there and become defiled because the world is looking like wolves to you two little sheep. I'm talking about my kids to you two little sheep and they just can't wait to tear into you and defile you. So yeah, I'm going to put a, a, a protection over you as best I can. And we're not going to do the dating like the West does the dating here. We're going to do it differently. And so there is never explained to them in their home a fear of God. Here's why we don't want you to do this. Because the Bible says this, 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 and that. I asked my children tonight, I said, why don't we lie? What's wrong with lying? And my son looked at me and he said, because that's what Satan does. And I said, and why else don't we lie? And he said, it's because it's a sin against God. That's why I instill that in my kids, because when I'm not there, like what Tyreek says, when they leave, if it's put in their heart, it will remain in their heart. If you raise them in the way they should go, they won't depart from it. It's our job. When you see people that are deconstructing, you need to look at who raised them. I'm not saying that's always the case, but there is something to be said about look to the parents. Now, with that being said, I did want to touch on the next part of this sower, and that's among the thorns. Before I get started, did you want to add, or can I go ahead and touch on this? Uh, just quickly, you know, mm -hmm. absolutely. That 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 home. That like I said, the environment, the environment. There, there's there's not a mentoring, a raising, a a a uh, like we have we have lesson plans and everything else for everything else but when it comes to the when it comes to the faith we don't do that in our home like you said there has to be more of a hands-on situation there and you said mm -hmm. if you raise them in a way that they should go they will not depart from them when they got older yes with 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 like little caveats here i'm not saying that it's not true it's it's absolutely true but you gotta understand I, like you said, I grew up. I grew up in a in a uh, in a Christian home, but as you said, I was not. I was not led. I was not sat down and said, "Hey, you know, like this is why we don't do this. This is why we, we get a whole lot of I told you so' in my community because I said so. You don't do that because I told you not to do that. You don't do that. Remember, remember, remember. and like that stuff holds a little weight until you become a little more mannish like you have you got your chest about you you got some arms you can withstand a blow to the head a blow to the arm like okay like it but this is what you're doing you're trying to beat me now all right let's let's hurry up and get this over with you know like when, once you start coming into your own there's really nothing that can happen there but like you said praise the lord you know you get out like myself that was something that happened with me i got up out of my mom's house and i could not wait to to not be held back by what all that little stuff that she was talking about because like you said it wasn't this is against god it was don't do it because i said so there's more of a fear of an almighty looming presence that's always watching and recording as opposed to somebody that's physical that can't see you i'm i'm on the west coast you're on the east coast i'm gonna try this stuff out that you held me back from and then you go to doing it and the thing that gets you is that conscience and the Holy Spirit? You can't even enjoy the kind of stuff that you're trying to do. Like it won't, it won't even allow you to do it. You're you're trying to be over here and drinking and doing that. You're trying to be over here fornicating and doing all of this. You're trying to do all of these different things, and you can't have a moment of peace because the word is in you. And it's coming to your remembrance like over and over and over again. And you try to do whatever you can to close that off or whatever, but it's not, it's not going anywhere. And that's what it is. If you raise them in the way that they should go, they will, when they're old, they will not depart from it. You may stray like the prodigal son, 
but you're coming back. The, 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 the word, the God's word cannot come back to him, boy. Because you know where life to... is. You yes, know where you know the where life, life is. is. And so in the next part of this, the sower among the thorns, this one hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it proves unfruitful. Now listen to that. It didn't wither, it didn't die. It stayed among the thorns, but it didn't have enough juice to produce anything because it was too caught up in everything else. It heard the word, it received it, but yo, I still got to make this money. I still got to live my life. There was not a I surrender all attitude. There was, I'll take Jesus 25% of the time because who wants to go to hell? But I'm also going to do 75% of what I want to do still. I'm still, still a Christian. I watched a video the other day. A gentleman pulled a knife on cops. They had to shoot him. They said, when they were providing aid, they said, are you a religious man? He said, yes. And she said, I'll pray with you. When I heard that, I was like, what, what kind of testimony is that? Yes, I'm a religious man. So I pulled a, a, a deadly weapon on law enforcement. I, there is a multitude of people that believe themselves to be saved and a Christian that are not. And these are the people that are falling away. I'm not saying, they, I'm not saying the majority of them were never saved. It could be. But once the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? And so some of these people were not believers. They were false converts. And a lot of that is going to fall on pastors because these pastors are refusing to bring the full gospel. That is going to be a, a, a weight on them on judgment day. There's going to be a lot of explaining to do why you didn't give the full gospel to these people because you led so many of them in a false conversion. And they went out into the world off of your words and they acted the way they did in the moment bad times came they were like uh-oh this ain't nothing of what pastor joel told me what this was going to be about so you know what i'm straight that's going to fall on the pastors because they're refusing to teach the word of god in its entirety and the end of this in the good soil the biggest part of all this that's why christ says you'll know them by their fruit is their fruit on that tree because if there's not fruit on that tree, as scripture says, it's time to uproot that tree because it doesn't need to be taking up the soil anymore. Somebody else could have that that's going to produce. It's a scary thing to think that time has run out because you've played with the holy things of God. You've played with his grace. You've played with his compassion because that was all that was preached to you. That was it. That's all you ever heard. The fear of God. You have to understand, and that's why when I sin and when I stumble, I am broken to my core because I realize how heavy my sin is. And I think more people should hear about sin. And that's why a lot of people, and honestly, we need to pull these people aside and say, hey, before you make this decision, before you give your life to Christ, I just want to make sure you understand what you're doing. I want to explain this to you in its entirety before we baptize you. That's why discipleship is important, but we're not doing it. We are running people through the gambit on Easter Sunday and saying, hey, 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 y'all, we baptized 100 people today. I'd love to check in with What's their follow-up? Yeah, exactly right. I'd love to check in with them in about five years to see if they're still in the faith. Five years. That's it. Let's just go five years and all the 100 keep their names in that book and let's redo it. Let's recap with them and say, how's it going? I think you'd be surprised how many people said, uh, I don't even go to church anymore. I don't even read the Bible anymore. I, I, it was just a thing I did. You know, I, I'm so happy I did that. You know, I'm saved now, uh, but I don't do any of that. I don't, I don't follow the Bible. I don't submit. I don't pray. I don't do any of those things. And so you have made a bunch of false converts. And I think that's really the majority of why a lot of people fall away today. That's my thoughts on that. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to quickly, I, I completely agree with you. I just wanted to read a quick scripture here. I'll just look into the uh to this right here. Well, while you're and, and, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I got it here. And it's um, um 
it's, it's, speak, it's speaking to it's speaking to that very fact of just trying to run people through like a like a conveyor belt line like oh well yo we got to get as much people over here to confess this and get into the and get into the kingdom of heaven is deeper than that it yeah, is it. so much deeper than that it's yeah, not it just is. some words and then you go live your life no there is changes that have to happen there is there is a kneeling and a breaking and all it is so much deeper yeah. to it Matthew chapter 23 and 15, it says, woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites, exclamation point, you travel over land and sea to win a single convert, and when you have succeeded, you make them twice as much a child as hell of you as you are. Why are they twice as much a child as (laughs) as hell? Do you you want to speak on that, or you want me, I don't mind, if you want to speak on that, I'll let you. They're they're as much of a child of hell as the, the teachers of the laws, because all they've done is made them religious. That's all they've done. They've they've created another religious person that thinks all they have to do is check blocks and they'll be into the heaven. There's nobody at the gate with a checklist. Okay, it's about your life. It's about your fruit of your life. They don't say, okay, what's your name? Oh, uh, did we attend a church majority of our life? Okay, check. Did you say the prayer? Check. Baptized? Okay. Did you? Did how much tithe? Okay. That's not going to happen. There mm-hmm. are things that you will be rewarded for. Okay, Scripture is very clear about that. Generosity is a gift. I'm not dogging on tithes, okay? Give what your heart says that you need to give, but give cheerfully. What I'm saying is the reason that that person has made that person a child of hell is because even the teachers of the law had no idea what it meant to receive salvation. And so they went over the seas and they burdened that new person and they put a yoke on them that even the the Pharisees couldn't do. They couldn't even lift it up. And now you've placed it on them. Make sure you're circumcised. Make sure you come to Jerusalem three, four times a year and do these things, sacrifice, you know, make sure you do all this. And then maybe, maybe we'll get, you know, maybe you'll make it in. And so that's why they've done that. And that's why Christ was so scolding on them because they were leading all these people astray. And now they're under a false sense of security. That's another exactly right. You're just sitting there, you're un- I've done the things. I should be good to go, and there's yep. no reason to look any further into it than that. Right. I, I've right. been told by the people of God that I am good to go, so therefore I'm good. What they say is good. I'm I'm straight. What what else is there I, to it? What else is there to it? I have a perfect example of that. I was a part of a mega church for a while. I've, I've now come out of there and a part of a smaller church that is holding to biblical truths and teaching. And they were doing one of those large baptism events uh, that they do at mega churches to just boost numbers. And the pastor baptized a woman and, you know, uh, ran her through the, through the, the gauntlet. And he said, now, are you ready to do whatever the Lord has for you to do in this life? And when she came up, she said, I got to do something else now. Do stuff. <laughs> I got to do, I got to do stuff. And the pastor went away and was like, maybe I'm not explaining this. You think you got people thinking all they need to do is get baptized and then they could just keep go living their life. Come on, pastor. No. Tell them the whole truth. You got people getting baptized talking about some ready. Pinch your nose. One, two, three. What is that? Oh, yeah. yeah what is that? Biblical. Yeah, that's wild. That's not biblical. No. Father, Son, no. Holy Spirit, where are the where are the ones that do the work? Where are exactly. the where are the ones that do the work according to how we're supposed to do it? That is why there's a majority of people that are falling away today. I'm going to close on this. At least what I have to say. I'm done. I'm the done. the the majority of people are falling away is because a they weren't taught in their house. Uh, they sat under a preacher that didn't give them the full gospel, and it was never enforced in their life. They never found value in it. And so when they got older and they saw tragedy, they saw a child die, they had a best friend murdered, they had their sister raped, something tragic happened in their life. And they said, a loving God would never do this. I'm not going to do any of this anymore. And they thought because of a fallen world and because of sin nature, they blamed God for this thing in their life that was probably sent there to mature them. You ever think about that? Tragedy comes into your life because you were supposed to be refined in affliction. Affliction is not fun. This life ain't fun. Death happens. Sickness happens. The first thing you do is blame God and walk away. We're in a weird place. 
we're in a weird place right now in our culture and in the church. And I pray for our church. I pray for our culture, but I don't think it's going to get any better. So for those of us and for those of you that are listening that hold to the truth and that hold to the Lord Jesus Christ and what he says to be true, hold on and endure till the end. And do not love your life so much as to shrink from death. Don't shrink from it. We love you guys. And we want to encourage you to continue in the faith. Don't, don't let go now. Don't fall away now. Amen. We love you. And God bless. God bless.